Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, again, good to uh, be back. Uh, good to have you again here, uh, Attorney General. And uh, let me just start out with uh, a question that was an issue a few months ago that we've not heard quite as much in the news lately, but uh, late last year, uh, Congress and President Biden became aware that the uh, Justice Department was negotiating settlements with uh, certain illegals uh, who were separated from their families uh, when they entered the United States illegally. Uh, at this time, is the Department of Justice contemplating, or are they at this point negotiating any compensation for these aliens who have entered the United States unlawfully? Uh, we are engaged in uh, extensive litigation right now uh, from um, uh, uh, migrants who are subjected uh, to the family separation um, um, program, which uh, uh, came under bipartisan attack. Uh, but we're in litigation with them, and I'm, I'm, uh, we are not um, uh, able to discuss um, uh, you know, further uh, since the matter's uh, under litigation. Okay. Um... All right. Well, if you could keep us posted on that, because that is an issue that uh, I think many uh, members of Congress are, are very interested in. So what you can disclose to that to members would be would be very helpful. Uh, we know that uh, current uh, immigration court caseload stands at well over and correct me if I'm wrong, but well, uh, well over one point five million cases. Um, but uh, there's recent statistics that have shown that less than 17% of these cases originated as credible fear referrals. So in light of that, uh, of those statistics anyway, it's hard to see how eliminating future asylum casework will have a significant impact on the flow of pending cases. And I think this one leads one to uh, wonder uh, if reducing the caseload is a mere pretext for a, a political decision. Uh, my question is, what other justification is there for giving up the department's authority to adjudicate these particular cases? So um, I, I don't know about the number you're, you're speaking of, it, unless, unless what you're talking about is a relatively low percentage of People who claim asylum ultimately get it, and that uh, that plainly is correct. Um, but uh, those have uh, typically gone through the immigration uh, court system. Um, the, you know, the reason for the asylum officer rule is to uh, streamline the process, uh, to make sure that the um, officers who know the most about asylums, which is the uh, DHS officers involved in asylum, um, uh, make the first uh, two determinations um, uh, of whether there's credible fear and, uh, and, um, and then uh, whether they're able to uh, uh, prove uh, persecution necessary to achieve asylum. We don't give, I'm not sure what, we don't give up adjudication. Somebody who loses can appeal in a streamlined process to the immigration judges. But we think that this will reduce, uh, you know, how long it takes um, for determinations of asylum and um, uh, the ultimate um, uh, removal uh, from the current uh, uh, over four years, we're hoping it to, to be around six months. So that's the, the purpose of that. It's a combination of uh, putting the first asylum issues in the asylum officers and then a streamlined um, um, record for decision by the uh, IJs. This is part of a, a series of, of, of uh, moves that uh, Executive Office of Immigration Reform have taken in order to speed up the process to reduce that uh, backlog that you, that you uh, mentioned. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree, though, that uh, it diminishes the value and the integrity of the role of, the of your immigration judges and uh, the immigration court system? No, no, quite the opposite. I think it gives us a chance to have immigration judges focus on, on the most difficult cases. Um, and uh, there, you know, we're, we wanna bring that, they are operating under a backlog that is almost, uh, you know, as a former judge, uh, the idea of having that many cases on my docket 
would uh, make me quite miserable as a judge. So I, I don't think in any way uh, this um, uh, would be uh, the importance and integrity of the immigration judges. But don't you think it's important for the record to be developed? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, there are, the record is developed. So the way in which the record is developed is uh, the uh, migrant uh, gets to put in whatever the migrant wants at the administrative uh, judge level. Uh, I'm sorry, at the administrative officer level. Then uh, if there's an appeal made to the immigration judges, uh, if there's additional information or new information that can be put into the record uh, by both um, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, which are the prosecutors in these cases, uh, or the migrant. So it doesn't eliminate it, but it streamlines it and it streamlines the amount of time they would have uh, to build that record. Okay. All right, I think my time is up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Adderholt. Uh, at this time, the 